Hello. Hello, hello. 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 There's a post-it note here, and I don't know what it's there for. There's nothing useful on it. Let's get rid of it! What a wonderful start. Hello! How are we doing? Hello, Akiro. Hello, Akristi. Uh, for some reason, Akiro's name in my chat is almost illegible. Um, because it's dark blue on very dark purple. Um, <laughs> hi! Hi, hi. Um... How are we? Apart from headachey, hopefully that can that can pass soon enough. Feel free to have a rest with a, you know, close your eyes, or what have you. Um, I say that I don't know whether you need to work or anything. It's just making, just making judgments. It's terrible, really, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna guess uh, that uh, well, Ragdoll usually isn't here for these streams, but I I don't think Chibi will be either. So. We're, we're riding with the stabilizers off today. Um, as we head, you know, we blast headfirst into the end of the game. Um, you still haven't changed your name color on Twitch? You have no idea how to. Uh, it's in the settings. Little cog at the bottom of chat, I think. Chat settings. Uh, oh, I've got better Twitch TV stuff, so it's probably a bit. Chat appearance? Nope, that's a that's a better Twitch TV thing. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. <laughs> uh extensions, honestly. Um <clears throat> Yeah, don't worry about it, it's fine. Um <clears throat> if a name comes up that's illegible, I can always look slightly to the left and see my bot in which uh your name is a bright pink on a black background, so I can read it very clearly. Um so yeah welcome also if it's that bad i can just refresh and then your name will be a different color um yeah strims 16 symbols that's what we're doing um right so uh, i transitioned it after it loaded all the stuff up marvelous um also i need to change the last column or i need to change the column on display to the one which we're doing at the moment because we are moving to the final area of the game um which i think we've decided is going to be some sort of wibbly wobbly portly nonsense from a shrine going to a shrimp shrine somewhere um and some portal stuff is going to happen so again, I'm thinking of this in terms of like Final Fantasies and the last area in a Final Fantasy game is always real weird. Um, so, and it makes, makes sense if we if we want to do stuff with crystals. That's very on brand with the FFs. But um, yeah, so we're going to a new dungeon and the first thing that's going to happen is we get a MacGuffin. Uh, Ragdoll suggested in, um, it sounds pretty JRPG. Uh, Ragdoll suggested that we're going to get more crystals because hey, if the crystals are what are going to be able to focus the energy um, to get everybody back to life. We're going to need more of them. Um, so maybe we go back to the cave and we go to get the crystals, but then oh, nonsense happens. Um, so that seems like a good idea. Um, so yeah, the first thing that happens is a MacGuffin get, which is what that symbol is for me. Uh, and then I'll just put a bunch of spaces. How many things have we got? So like I said, it's not, there's not much left. There's what? One, two, seven. Uh, duh, duh. Yeah. But we know the last one. The last one's going to be plot, if I've done it right. Um, because end cutscene, basically. Um, but yeah, the rest of them are a mystery. Probably fights, if I had to hazard a guess. I think I had a higher weight percentage chance of there being a boss rush in this column. Hopefully not more than one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty end of gamey. Um... Okay, I like the idea that we're going to go somewhere and we're going to wear crystals and stuff. You just realised that you missed part of last stream because Nice called. That is a perfect prompt for me to explain what happened on the last stream. So, because I'm bad like that. Um, so having um, now dealt with uh, the Zebus Corporation, that is now literally a pile of rubble um, because it attacked us. It turned into a building and it attacked us. Oh, well, that's not supposed to happen. What happened there? Um... Yeah, everything, everything's gone weird. I'll sort that out later, that's fine. Uh, anyway, big thing attacked us. Um, and we destroyed that, and now we've got to deal with Shrimp God, 
being in existence, having absorbed all the life essence of everything, every magical creature in in the world. Um, we did discover just uh, towards the end of that fight that I don't know if we had. I don't know. That was at the fight before we destroyed the big goop monster and. Uh, where was this? Yes. Okay. Some of the energy was focused via the crystal in Mo's backpack to Flo, and Flo regained her sort of her sense of self. So we thought, ah, crystals. That might be a thing. Let's go to people who actually know some stuff. So we went to Magma City. In Magma City, we found the heads of the guilds that were designed literally before we started the draw-through, <laughs> because I'm uh, terrible at incorporating people's things punctually. Um, so yeah, we have the, uh, the head of the engineers, the alchemists and the mages, and they were all arguing over how they're supposed to do these things. Um, and what we should do with the crystal, and how it should work, what machine to be built, and so on and so forth. But they decided to make a generic uh, JRPG cylinder, science cylinder, um, as it seems to appear in quite a lot of these. Um, so we get a callback to our very first draw through. I think like the second episode of our first draw through. Um, three years ago now, I think. Quite a while. Um, and we just stuff all of our, our characters in there who have either reverted to just being animals or just being mushrooms or just being cattles or what have you. Elevator, yes indeed. Um... I like the fact that the stick is peeling off, but there's nothing actually underneath it this time. <laughs> no one knows what this is for. <laughs> they just decided to call it an elevator. Um, but we need to actually get some of this magical energy from somewhere. Last time we got it from defeating a massive creature made of goop. Um, fortunately, uh, the lava snakes that have been around... Um, I always love the call, but anytime I draw a cylinder, it's just easy, easy little, easy little thing to make me smile. Um... Yes, fortunately the little lava snakes uh, have been uh, growing a little bit strangely recently, so we decided to go and have a bit of a fight with one of those. Um, that released a whole bunch of magical energy, um, and as a consequence, from all of our, it, we managed to focus it using the machine so that all of our familiars and non-human friends uh, have regained consciousness and woke up in a tube uh, with wick, which is always dangerous. But uh, they're here now. And so now we need to work out how to implement this thing so that we can get all the energy back, which is probably going to involve killing Shrimp God somehow, um, but then also how to focus all that energy and that sort of thing. So presumably, now that we know this theory works, uh, the boffins in Magma City can, you know, work out some sort of machine to do it, but we need to go out and get some crystals before that can happen, and that I think is the sort of starting... It's actually quite nice to have, like... <laughs> Because usually, al almost all of these sorts of stories end with, we need to kill God. Um, and I like the idea that this this ending isn't, we need to kill God. It's, we need to collect resources so that we can get make the machine so that when we do kill God, things can get sorted. And then we just accidentally kill God along the way. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> We're not going to have like the, the emotional rallying cry at the end. And, oh, this is our final battle, everyone. Get ready. We might not be coming back. No, we're just literally going to a cave to get some crystals. And it just all goes wrong. Um, so, yeah, we need more crystals so that we can focus this energy widespread. We need to get it back around the Earth or back around the planet or whatever it is we're on at the moment. Giant space turtle. Who knows? Um, <laughs> a lot end with we need to kill God. It, we, in this one, we do need to kill God. Whether we do it, I don't know. Maybe something else will come along. Maybe Grandma Bonk is going to take care of the god killing. Um, given that she is also a god. But, um... Because she did go missing, like, halfway through the story, and no one's really mentioned it. <laughs> so, presumably, we're going to meet her somewhere along the way. Um... Yeah. So, the first thing that happens is we go to a, a place that we haven't been to before. A dangerous dungeon we haven't been to, and we get a MacGuffin. Presumably, we're collecting crystals. Um... So let's see what happens as a consequence of us collecting crystals. <laughs> and we have... Character introspection. What a time. What a time to be doing this. Um, <laughs> character development. We haven't had one of those for ages, have we? <laughs> character when was the last time we had character development? It was here, was it? More than half the story ago. <laughs> I forgot this symbol existed. Um, right, uh, okay, I was just saying, where's Grandma Bonk, right? 
characters we've met before can come back into the story at any point. So maybe now we we start seeing something to do with Grandma Bonk and that causes Mo to have a bit of a a thing. Um, and maybe a discussion between Mo and Poison Nurse about like, you know, Mo Mo being lucky to have these powers given. And maybe this is actually when Mo starts to understand that you know her abilities are not necessarily her own. Um, something along those lines. We can start addressing that because so far Mo's been oblivious largely. Um, not stupid, just unknowing. Okay, so what's the trigger? What's the what's the um? We go to get crystals. Um. Do we just want a random portal? Maybe maybe it is literally Grandma Bonk opening the portal because because the portal we saw before was for the um one of the followers of the hippo goddess thing. So presumably Grandma Bonk has that power as well. That's my oblivious worst. <laughs> yes. What a weird it's, it's a sequence of two words. Um, so that's something from a Roll Doll novel. Um, okay, yeah. So, oh, right. I'm gonna say we'll get to the cave. Portal opens up. Um, Grandma Bonks there says something. Um, I need colors. Also, watch how I'm gonna fix this. These broken pictures. I've done it before. It's a bit of. Bit of doctoring, it's just annoying that this happened. Actually, let's do that now while I work stuff out. Okay, so. Uh, why is there. Oh, hang on. Hang on. To reboot my. Or oh, wipe and refresh my laptop so that I can actually use it. Bricked itself up for some reason. And now all of my settings have gone to default. So I do. Tell it not to turn off so that I can actually see chat all the way through the stream. That'll be lovely. Thank you very much. I want to see that. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of doctoring. Um, not extraordinarily sure this is entirely fixable, but we can give it a go. We can only try. That's why is that mirroring? Stop doing that. Thank you. So yeah, how's how's everybody's start to the week been? I'm just mulling over in my head how to exactly implement this system. I'm gonna be perfect, but it should be good enough. What I want to do, and then of course that's missing, but that's fine. That can be sorted as we go. Uh, actually, that wasn't quite there. I think that's better. Good enough. Um, let's just patch this up. Why is it always the pictures that look nice that this happened? Um, also, where did that happen? Technology has revolutionized art. <laughs> okay, this is just a random cloud now, don't worry about it. <laughs> then I'm gonna just sort of... <laughs> Thank you, random Clip Studio user, for inventing a liquify brush. Um, and that's got a similar thing going on there. Quite a nice effect, actually. Works quite well for canyons. Um, yeah, that broke as well. Weird, I don't know what's happening there. Oh well. These things happen. Let's just go from here. Probably something like that. We'll sort it out.
Blendy blend. Nobody will ever see the joins. Blendy blend. Um. Mare, but finally oil painted again. Ooh, exciting. Sorry, this is probably not particularly interesting. I'm just trying to work out in my head how the story's gonna go. Um. Let's get the car back. So I can do some fixes. I'm forging my own work. That's a weird thing to do on a stream. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can kind of tell. Maybe if you try real hard. It's generally fine. Um. Also, your second guessing your dumb star sketch idea. Oh yeah, god, I need to get on that. Ah, so many, th too many things are happening at once. Um. There you go so far, you have many things to draw and not enough time for every idea. Yes, I know! <laughs> uh, second guessing your dumb sketch idea, you might need to do something else instead. If so, you let me know what your first idea was too, or um, we'll do a tiny bare bone sketch just to show me. You can do whatever you like. Um, look forward to seeing cool stuff. And I need to get on mine. Um, it is usually empty. No! Not so much nowadays, uh, still almost all fan art, but yeah, this fan art is art. Can't spell fan art without art. Um, okay, so. Um, so what I'm thinking, I still think this is a bit, yeah, there's some stuff going on there, I can fix that. It manually. Um, what I'm thinking is uh, there's a portal and there's Grandma Bonk, and Grandma Bonk is in some sort of distress and sort of pulls us through and says, Mario, you need to save me, and so on and so forth. Um, then we get pulled through and we go to this <clears throat> weird, non-sensible, uh, <laughs> we go to the weird end of the game world, um, and, you know, maybe Moe's like, why do, why, why do I need to save Grandma Bonk? Grandma Bonk knows us a lot more than me, and all that sort of stuff. Thinking back to the, the thing that happened in the desert with Grandma Bonk is like, you know, her, the hallucination of her hallucination in inverted commas of her saying oh you need to get up you need to do things so on and so forth she sort of sees herself still as learning and all that sort of stuff um has, has a has a way to go um and that's maybe when poison nurse starts saying you know you have like the gift of the goddess right <laughs> to which mo says the what now and then we can have a conversation about all that sort of stuff I don't really know what it entails. Largely an intuition about how creatures work and their... They're very beings and their thought processes and that's why she's so good at healing people and all that sort of stuff. Um, and also fighting big monsters without killing them. Um, still have not gotten any star ideas. <laughs> well. Google star followed by a random word. See what comes up. You wanted to bang your head against the wall when you finally thought of something. <laughs> Probably all grown when you tell you. Um, I'm I, I think yeah, Christy's doing the final version of my sketch, so I'm not sure how much Christy will like me for the <laughs> the idea I have, but it's not that complicated. It's just kind of fun. Um, I thought I'd try and play to what I think is sort of Christy's proven strengths, because Christy's very good at lots of different things, and I was like, okay, let's not push too much out of. 
your comfort zone. Um, and uh, try and focus on who's who's drawing it rather than just making a thing and then going, oh yeah, hang on, someone has to finish this. Um, okay, so that's done. I still have to do that, but that's less important. Um, okay, so let's actually draw a thing. 25 minutes in, let's draw a thing. Okay, so... We're in a mine. <laughs> and it's, well, it's, you know... It's a collaboration. There's no point doing a collaboration if you're just going to do your your half of it. You know. Without considering the other half. <laughs> um... What's the other thing? Oh yeah, it's, it's character. I can't even remember what it is. Character grow. Character growth happens inexplicably here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to think of me since you'll be rendering mine. I'm kind of up for anything. You go for it. Um, I like trying new things. So. But at the same token, you don't have to come up with anything extraordinary. It can be something that I, you're used to seeing me doing. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. Just exciting to see what's what's going to happen. Also, it's auto saving. Despite the fact I haven't drawn anything yet. Right. <clears throat> so. Hmm. Details, details. Let's get the portal up. All right. So the portal, I think, looked like this. Sort of. And inexplicably sparkly. Sparkles. Uh, yeah, so this sort of opens up while we're in the cave or wherever it is with the shrine. Um, and Grandma Bonk. I kind of want it to be like hazy, so uh, I guess I'll go to draw, do a drawing and then rub it out. <laughs> Now kind of more fingers forward reaching out to say help me um i've also forgotten grandma bonk's outfit and how to draw proportions because all the things i've been drawing recently have been ill proportioned <laughs> deliberately i was drawing massive tanks and the laliens and stuff um Is Grandma Bonk's hippo just still sort of hanging out in the pond back in uh, the starting place, Rosenberg? <clears throat> Proportions effect. That's what I used to keep telling myself when I did October. <laughs> oh, it's been so long. I need to get reference up. Uh, as usual, I'm using Chibi's wonderful reference for Grandma Bonk. Wonderful drawing. Um, doesn't matter too much, because like I say, I'm going to be sort of rubbing it out slightly. I'm guessing the end of this story is probably going to involve, you know, Grandma Bonk sacrificing herself to save the staff. We're going to fight. Like, Grand it's going to be one of those things where, like, we can't fight a god. We're just people. And then Grandma Bonk comes along and goes, you can't fight a god. But what if I nullified the god bit <laughs> and you fought what was left? Um, 
and then Grandma Bonk sacrificed, and then the status quo is returned. But oh no, we lost Grandma Bonk. Gonna make it look like wrinkles and not a pencil moustache. Hippo may be some menace now, as all hippos are. I like the idea that the hippo was just a hippo. It wasn't a familiar. It was never a familiar. Grandma Bon can't have a familiar because she's a god. <laughs> so she just got a hippo. I was like, oh, I got a pet hippo. This is my familiar. Ah, <laughs> Bonk, we barely saw the. That's what the rewrite's for. <laughs> <laughs> the rewrite is to, to get her in there somewhere and have her make make that a bit more emotional. Um. Auto saving takes about five minutes with a file this big. I'm on layer 150, apparently. Good this picture is. <laughs> Chibi, as usual. Far too good. Too good for their own good. Uh, what I want is a sort of like leaning forwards but with a sort of skirt. That's a bit better. So clearly sort of It takes about five minutes with the layer this big, and it's done. It's usually it happens so fast you don't even notice it's happening. That's what I mean by five. I, I mean a impatient modern computer user five minutes, <laughs> which is approximately three se three seconds. Oh, it's gonna take a year to do. Ten seconds later, see. This is a big portal. Or Grandma Bonkers shrunk. Which is entirely plausible. Space and time and all that. Uh, if you guys have got any ideas as to what's, what's sort of happening here and what, what could be happening... Because at, at this point, you know, the story is largely locked down. Precisely how the end events are going to play out is up for debate, but, you know, we can mess around a little bit now. We don't have to follow the the things too strictly. We can, we can have a little bit of a... Also, we can design the final area, which can be weird. Full of clocks or something. Actually, what would it be? Um... We don't really have a theme this game doing <laughs> this game doesn't really have a visual theme um your pc literally loads pictures like in the 90s uh oh like in the 90s sometimes incrementally <laughs> but it's a bad pc though it's just technology be trolling yeah this laptop is the laptop that i'm reading you on i had to turn it off and on again because when i turned it on the first time it took about 10 minutes to try and log in and i'm like this isn't going to be good. <laughs> Let's reset and hope it's better. <laughs> so 
Sometimes it just be like that. Also, how do wrists work? Or like that. Third tries the charm. Good enough. And what I want is for it to be all sort of blurry. Oh no, what's happening? Oh. <laughs> Let's reset and hope it's better. It's just technology, yep. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And such. Um. So this, I assume, is happening as, you know, everyone's just sort of walking out with crystals in their arms. Um. Yeah, we sort of solved the problem of like, okay, well, we, we know how to get everyone back. But the pro problem is we do have to kill Shrimp God. Um, maybe Peridot knows something about this? What with being... Um... A... Uh, healing Goddess Temple Person. Monk, that's the word. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> I thought we got this sorted. Just come here, pick up some crystals and leave. No, nope, no. Oh, now I've got to turn the screensaver off. I just want to see chat. <laughs> Stop at the, the screen. Who's... Why do I even turn off screensaver? <laughs> Start after never, please. Thank you. It looks nice, but it's just gonna get in the way. Um, Peridot knows stuff, just doesn't think to mention it until it's very pertinent. I, I feel like Peridot's like... We, we ascertained when we first designed Peridot that, you know, maybe, maybe she wasn't the most attentive. Um, of the monks, and as a consequence, uh, might not be entirely confident that her knowledge is accurate. Um, although she would, she would never admit that. <laughs> and as a consequence, maybe she knew there was something, but doesn't want to say because she might be wrong. Doesn't want to make a fool of herself, you know. Uh, drawing people. I like drawing weird creatures and stuff. <laughs> Human beings? They're hard. Well, they're soft, actually. That's the problem. They're all weird and lumpy and squishy. How? I don't know. One day I'll learn. <laughs> uh, no, he's got short sleeves, isn't he? Um, should specify, as usual, music is courtesy of Adrian Von Ziegler, the lovely uh, Celtic music playlists, albums. Um, I should also uh, express, even though I always use the Celtic music, um, he makes all sorts of music. <laughs> There's like some other fantasy stuff. The other day he released a um, what he described as the most Japanese piece of music he could possibly create. And as a consequence, he got some friends to help him 
uh, translate the title and the description into Japanese, and it was a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, sort of inspired by sort of kabuki theater and all that sort of stuff. Um, which is always, if you if you want something, want something interesting, kabuki. There's a lot going on in that. Actually, I do wonder because, like, the, the closest the closest I can think of that we would have to Kabuki would be um, pantomime, which is obviously but it has a very different social uh, niche. Um, I'm just wondering whether other cultures have something sort of similar. That's a very sort of exaggerated um, sort of theatre style with sort of character archetypes. The sort of um, the Commedia dell'arte, I think, has is that sort of. That sort of thing. So that answers question number one. Yes, other places do have that. Um, <laughs> Italy in particular. Uh, also, I don't know where uh, where Viv is um, during all this. Viv was was just sort of recovering last time we we saw her. So what theatre started out? I mean, that's an, that's that's a, a big old arguable one because, you know, who started theatre? <laughs> was it the Greeks? Was it imported from further east? Was it, you know, cavemen making strange voices? <laughs> I do not know enough about history, um, but I do like learning about the similarities and differences of cultures. Um, is this picture important? Absolutely not. Am I still drawing it? Yes. Because really what we want to get to is the character introspection. And then the seven bosses hopefully will follow this. <laughs> I mean, actually, character introspection in the last area of a game seems pretty on on point, actually. That, that's that's pretty... Pretty JRPG. Maybe there are some sort of weird flashes of, like, things that have happened in the past. As Poison Nurse is explaining, we see sort of in the background these weird sorts of play-by-plays of events in the game and Mo's like, oh, that makes sense now. <laughs> Somewhere keeping boys safe. Because I guess, I guess presumably now, obviously, Vive's... Um, although maybe not. Because Vive was working with Poison Nurse, right? Sorry, Viv. Viv, Viv, different characters. Um... Viv was working with Poison there, so maybe Viv did have something in place to make it so that uh, her familiar wasn't affected by the, the forthcoming events. Also, Brad is massive. It's pretty tall, but it's not that big. Oh, there is a Jib! Hello! What's going on? Uh, character introspection. <laughs> Uh, and me being unable to draw today, apparently. I don't know what that line is. Um, okay. Rough. Let's have a little too. I, I, I did manage to point out that the last time we had this symbol was... Uh, here. So, <laughs> it has been half the game 
since any kind of character development has happened. <laughs> I don't even remember what this was. <laughs> but it feels like it makes sense that this is going to happen in the final area. Some of that does tend to happen in these JRPGs. Um, okay, so what we sort of came up with was... <laughs> no wonder JRPGs have no character development, yeah. Again, these, these are statistically roughly the same sort of distribution of as uh, the original games. Um, you having a good beginning to the week, Chimp? Hope you are. Um, yeah, so what we came up with was Ragdoll suggested that the MacGuffin that we get is more crystals. Because we're going to need crystals to focus the energy to get everyone back back going and then we have to solve the problem of the whole killing god thing um and as, and so we go to a place to get crystals the shrine the shrimp shrine and we find a cavern full of crystals and stuff and everyone's like oh great we got crystals then a portal opens up because of course it does um and grandma bonks there and she's like oh it's mo you need to come through and save me and so on and so forth and we're pulled into the surreal weird final area of the game um and there you know Bo's like, oh, I wonder why, wonder why Grandma Bonk wanted me of all people. You know, I'm just the student. Um, to which, you know, Poison Nurse actually finally explains, you know you're, like, infused with <laughs> the the whole goddess thing, right? You know you're the sort of the vessel of, of the healing goddess's power. Um, and Mo retorts with the obvious, I'm sorry, what now? <laughs> And so that's that's the introspection. That, that's the character development. Mo finally realizing that she has this sort of power thing, and maybe we get flashbacks of events where that's happened, where you know Mo's had that in strange intuition that things are happening, um, and you know precisely what that does to Mo. We haven't got that. We haven't got there yet. I haven't drawn the weird place. <laughs> How do you not know this? How do you assume we know anything at this point? <laughs> That's on you. Um, you're good. You're having nice beach times. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Also, I fixed the picture because I broke some stuff from a couple of streams ago. Somehow, I don't know. How, um, I don't know how this happened, but I, man I managed to fix it for this one. Can't even tell. Can't even tell anything was wrong. Um. I'll do it for the other one eventually, I'm sure. Uh, oh yeah, and then we discussed the idea that probably Grandma Bonk... Uh, like, oh, how, how are we, a bunch of whoever's, how are we going to kill a god? To which the answer is, well, we have a god on our side. Um, maybe the god sacrifices themselves to take out most of the power of the god and then we run in and finish the job? And so we have the moment of Grandma Bonk sacrificing herself. Very, it feels very JRPG. Um, you know what this? Nobody ever tells me anything. Have you not figured this out by now? Don't you tell me whether or not I figured things out by now. <laughs> oh, and Brad's just like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I just came to get crystals. What's happening now? Sometimes Mo just doesn't look like Mo. Um, Mo and Poison Nurse are great for enemy. I think at this point, Poison Nurse has just forgotten that Mo is an enemy because, like, how could I have thought this person was an enemy? They don't know anything. That looks very grown up here. Body going on. Uh, 
And then if Grandma Bong sacrificing herself would be right though, because thus far the conflict between Shrimp God and her seems pretty selfish. I mean, I don't know, we're just talking about ideas of how to, to end this. Um, and also, we, uh, we're also talking about how the fact that we should probably, in the rewrite, mention Grandma Bonk more. <laughs> At some point. Um, unless you've been completely misreading things. I don't know, I don't know. I, I mean, you think I'm paying attention? If you think I've been paying attention, you clearly haven't been paying attention. Um... <laughs> Uh, we have the backpack back on it. Like I say, I don't, I don't know. Got some more of these funky, funky crystals. By the way, I'm imagining these crystals are just like bright pink. Don't know why. I've just realized that this is entirely a monochrome and... I feel like these are just like luminous pink. Again, that might be because I've been playing a lot of Hollow Knight. Who knows? A lot of bright pink crystals in Hollow Knight. Uh, we did also consider the idea that the hippo that's back in uh, uh, Rosenberg, um, Grandma Bonk's uh, familiar, is in fact not a familiar. Um, Grandma Bonk doesn't have a familiar, but in order to blend in, she needed an animal, so she just got a pet hippo. Because why not? <laughs> She's a hippo goddess. Your interpretation of the conflict between the gods was they had a big fight. The big fight caused magics and chaos to exist. Shrimp was defeated. Grandma Bonk uh, just left and chilled out until he got back. Maybe. Um. Maybe that. Maybe that's like properly what we learn now. Um. Maybe this person that you know Mo has been idolizing for her life and who has given her her powers. Um. Maybe isn't the selfless person that she thought. Maybe there's a bit of oh, a little bit of inner, inner conflict going on there. Um, you know, now she's asking us to come save her without any explanation, etc., etc. But maybe there's a redemption arc at the end where Grandma Bonk sacrifices herself. Was like, oh, do you know what? This has been going on long enough. We've caused enough tr trouble. Boom. Time to go. <laughs> You're a god, why don't you do it? Ah, I don't wanna. <laughs> You're a god, why don't you do it? I'm a god, why should I? <laughs> what do you think followers are for? <laughs> you know, may maybe... Like, generally speaking, gods have, like, followers and cults and groups and all these sorts of things, but maybe... Having an explicit protege in the form of Mo has caused Grandma Bonk to think a little more about people and, you know, the effect that the cosmic messing around is having on the lives. Um, and as a consequence, maybe that changes her sort of actions and view and... I don't know. Again, it's a bit weird to have a redemption arc for a character we haven't seen since the beginning of the game. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Okay, so, cave shenanigans, crystals and such. Um... What's our followers are for? Well, then where are yours? Paradox watching awkwardly from the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know that too. Hey, where did they go? <laughs> That's another unfinished plotline. 
Probably should have been sorted out. Maybe we'll find them in the in the weird void from beyond. Um. Speaking of which, what does that look like? Because I'm gonna have to draw it in a second. Um. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey void. Great. Cool. Fantastic. Um So like the opening titles for Doctor Who? <laughs> I mean that's just sort of wormholey really, isn't it? It's difficult to Probably actually easier if I do this. Somewhat like this. Um, and as is traditional JRPG fair, um, we're standing on just some floating rocks. <laughs> that are just sort of inexplicably. But slowly this place which is made from the memories of people starts filling up with our memories and we, we visit places we've been to before or something along those lines. I don't know. Weird stuff happens. <laughs> Again, I talk about the FF8 or FF7 stories, but... Well, um, <clears throat> it'll be cool if we find Peridot's colleagues' families in the void. They've basically been spending their time holding back shrimp or something like that. That's neat. Um, because maybe, like, Shrimp is, like, physically here, but their power is still not fully sort of re recharged, so they haven't, you know... Shrimp God could probably just obliterate everything. Um, they've basically just done a city at this point. <clears throat> They've been doing their job. It's Dishonored Void across Doctor Who title screen. Prediction for the new series of Doctor Who, there's going to be floating rocks in the title screen. I'm calling it Flux. I don't know why. Doctor Who Flux. It's like, call it... Call it Series 13, cowards. Um... I know the show hasn't had an awful lot of luck recently, but still. You're on Doctor 13, Series 13. Own it. Prediction for the next Doctor Who, The Outsider shows up. Is there something in Doctor Who that's basically The Outsider? Probably. Um, there, we've been to the void between universes. 
I guess. That was like series th three? Two. Yeah, the end of series two. Um, and the middle of series two. You think you'd fit in? Yeah, sure. Why not, at this point? <laughs> Dishonored Doctor Who crossover. Why not? I was gonna, because series 13's coming out, I think in like a week. Um, and I still haven't seen 11 or 12 yet, <laughs> so... <laughs> I saw a few from 11 and then just stopped. Um, and I was gonna do like kind of bingey sort of, not binge, but like an episode a day or something. A Doctor, the Master, the Outsider. It's the Doctor, the Master, the Valiard, the Rani. They're all the. <laughs> Proportions here don't make sense. Don't worry about it. Um. <laughs> so yeah, if if your name begins with a the, you're a Time Lord. <laughs> I don't make the rules. I'm not sure anyone does at this point. <laughs> the portal for which we came. Shrimp God decides your proportions in the void. <laughs> oh God, Brad, Brad's used to this. <laughs> Brad will fit right in. <laughs> Brad's just up here somewhere. <laughs> no, Brad's, Brad's actually just down here. He's like, not having any of this. <laughs> Bloody adventure nonsense. <laughs> I came here to collect crystals. <laughs> I'm not on Team Shrimp. Just doing this while everyone's working stuff out, boys and nurses having a chat. I'm not gonna draw everyone, by the way. Um Because quite frankly we have too many people in the party to be doing that every single time I want to draw a scene. Just suffice it to say everyone's here. Lore experts, uh no, this is the only place where Brad's character model is the right size. <laughs> <laughs> looking through the bottle. What is this? Mo, what is this? This is dumb. Bran, you sing this nonsense. Take me home. Yeah. Bran's also sitting with Brad. Um. I've got poison there speaking and going, you do know what's going on, right? <laughs>
She kind of looks like she's floating there. Um, Bran and Brad are friends now. Yeah. They're, they bonded over um, disillusionment. <laughs> Brian still doesn't know how she ended up being friends with the teenager, but hey, at least is not having any of this nonsense just like her. Yeah. And then there's other characters over here. Etc. Etc. I'm not gonna draw them all. Right. Okay. So we're here. We have the character development thing. So what? What exactly is this? So we, we want to kind of work out. There's only six symbols left, and one of them is plot. So we kind of want to work out what our trajectory is from this point, if possible. I guess. But there's not gonna be. Say there's not gonna be much story. You're probably gonna meet a new character in a second. Um. But, um. Because trying to set Jethro on fire, Jethro thinks is just trying to play. A kind of a best combination. Um, Gil and Gabe are having a calm philosophical discussion. They're kind of parallels in the parties, aren't they? What's the parallel to Grigori? I mean, you've got the pairing of Grigori and Stoker, the sort of um, bad uncle <laughs> dynamic. Um, yeah, I don't think there is a Grigori in the, in the party. Onion, maybe? <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Grigori is one of a kind. And he'll be the first to tell you that. Onion is Grigori. <laughs> Onion is robot Grigori. Um. Don't tell me she said that. Can I clip? How do I clip? Clip, copy to clipboard. Marvelous. Oh, right. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Honestly, it says less about Gregory and more about Onion, to be honest. Right. And Mo obviously poisoned this. <clears throat> um. Yeah, oh, oh, that was the other idea. I don't know whether you were here when we were talking about this. The idea that, like, there is information, like, some of the party do know Peridot, for example, being a monk of Shrimp Shrine. Um, not Shrimp Shrine. Pro no, uh, Hippo Goddess. Being an acolyte thereof um, does know a decent amount about all of these sorts of things. Um, but obviously having not paid a great deal of attention isn't particularly confident that what she knows is actually accurate um so she, you know she just never thought to bring it up um what is onion all about exactly onion is all about your stuff um <clears throat> it's probably the easiest way to explain it <laughs> um <laughs> onion wants your money <laughs> Onion, I don't know, I guess Onion's like the, the Yuffie of the party, almost. A weird thing to say, but... They're optional, they're stealing your stuff. <laughs> like, kind of works. Um... Uh, for translation purposes, Yuffie is Miss Terry Ninjessie. Um... Onion's the only part of the game that has in-game transactions. <laughs> You don't get anything back. Um, maybe Onion is DLC. 
<laughs> Maybe onion is, you, you have to pay onion to be onion in the game. Um, originally it was just, oh, it's saving a cute robot from a big monster. Now it's just like, give me your money. <laughs> it threatens you with a spanner. Uh, or they are, I don't remember the pronouns. Neither do I. Um, I imagine they don't mind so long as they've got your stuff. They will get you arguing about pronouns and while you're distracted, nick your stuff. Um, but I also like the idea that it's like... Now that, that's Yuffie as well, isn't it? <laughs> I was going to say, I like the idea that it's like, it's going to steal your stuff but isn't like particularly secretive about it. Um... And so I'm kind of reminded a little bit of, um, ah, oh, what's the name? Hang on, I will have a look now. Um, do 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 do, do 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 do, skibu da bam ba do do ba 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 do da ba ba bam, skilly bidly ba ba boo doo boo. Streaming's probably not gonna like this me scrolling for Instagram. Uh, come on, you post frequently. Where's your stuff? There is a robot in a comic, and I'm like, that's that feels like onion. Why well, is none? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Instagram, post things chronologically, please. Is this this is interest? This is interesting. What's this going? Ah. Um, get a new character for 16 symbols, now on sale for forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> for reference, the game the game is f like five fifty. Um, <laughs> oh, they also run you with a Discworld character. Ooh. Uh, maybe it's in stories. Maybe they posted something in stories recently. No. Ah, Exo Comics. There we are. Exo Comics. Um, and let me see if I can. Uh, Li Chen. Poor, poor in stanza. I don't. I always say poor in stanza. I don't think that is, is any legitimate language. Um. Anyway, you should all follow Exa Comics. They're delightful. Um. Anyway, that ro that robot sometimes reminds me of Onion. So, what a reference! How how enriched this stream is. Um, <laughs> all pay in terms. And get onion gets one robot part at a time. You're just sort of carrying around a, an arm for the first ten minutes. Uh, anyways, uh, who's all getting character development here? You shooting Mo and Poison Nurse to the Grandma Bonk and Peridot? Probably, probably yes. I should probably draw Peridot if that's the case. Peridot's just sort of standing over here, going, "I probably should mention something." <laughs> Yeah, to sort out the shape of the face before you draw the face. Um. Still doesn't look great, but it is what it is. Um. Uh, yeah, so Mo's got the whole kind of like realizing having flashbacks, maybe explicit flashbacks being shown on screen in the void. Um, this looks nothing like Paradox. Okay, no. There you go.
Maybe this is the thing where we can sort of like drop hints throughout the story that like Peridot knows the thing but doesn't want to say because oh, I don't know if I'm going to be right. Don't want people to yell at me for being wrong. Um... Welcome to the disproportionate void. Um... Yeah, so... What happens after this? How do we, where are we going to lead from here? That's probably the best way of thinking about this. Where does this need to go to? This needs to go to... Someone joining the party? <laughs> yeah, sure. Grandma Bong, children join the party? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we'll have a boss at some point, I'm sure. We got a big party going. <laughs> we have twelve. Um, no wait, we have twelve. Thirteen, lucky number thirteen. Our party is so big. <laughs> Look, we had one symbol where five people joined. <laughs> that wasn't on me. I just thought Poison Nurse was joining. Then suddenly Gregory and Brand are joining, which implies that Wick and uh, Gabe are going to join later on. Um, not the biggest JRPG party out there, not at all. Again, FF6 is, in my brain, pretty, pretty much, pretty larger than this, and that's definitely not top, so. <laughs> Temporary party member, Grandma. Hopefully we get a death symbol. Uh, <laughs> uh okay. So, is Grandma going to maybe this is maybe this can be a continuation of the development. This is maybe where we learn that Grandma maybe isn't the, the philanthropic nice person that Mo thought they were, but, and is actually closer to the selfish god that Poison Nurse thinks they are. Or maybe we start to understand. Oh, hang on, Poison Nurse probably actually has a point. Um, I have no idea who would join us at this point. I think we said that the character join can also count as introducing a new character but at the same time short of like all of the missing <laughs> um, all, all of the missing uh, temple members uh, from Peridot's temple short of that I don't know what else we would do um, it's probably a grandma bonk situation But <laughs> you love Bonk. Characters can be complex. Um. You know, and all this will get resolved. JRPG story, everything gets wrapped up in a nice neat bow. Maybe not a happy bow, but a neat bow. Um. Okay, this just raises more questions. I was hoping this would clarify things. Um, so, okay, so are we going with Grandma Bonk? <laughs> but then why would she join as a party member if we're just trying to if we're just trying to demonstrate? That she doesn't really care? Maybe she does care? Maybe she's trying to pretend to care? I don't know. Uh... Do we want to bring Fu back? <laughs> um, Fu comes in with an airship flying through the void or something. Uh, he said she joins the party but then immediately takes charge and disrupts the party member flow. Um, I assume, yeah. Flow is in with a W. Not the frog.
Where is Fu? Uh, Fu was injured, I think, while trying to rescue a bunch of uh, resistance members from a massive fire. Um, and so he was taking a bit of a break. She's a god. She doesn't care about the city team-ups. She just zaps enemies out of existence. Yeah. Maybe that might be quite fun. Should we see what the next symbol is to see where this is going? Whether that storyline can resolve itself? Probably a boss, right? Please be a boss. <laughs> um... I don't know, if this was set up before, if this whole, like... Oh, you found a character summary you were reminded of because of the thievery. The City Watch member uh, has a known affinity for thievery, namely anything that isn't nailed down is his, and if it can be pried loose, it's not considered nailed down. Um, but honest about the big things, i.e. the ones too heavy to lift. <laughs> um, I do like the idea of Fu coming in on an airship, but that can happen at any time, so... Um... Like I said, I like the idea of having this sort of Grandma Bonk sort of selfishness manifest. I really wish it happened earlier. So then we had time for it to develop and time for Mo to go, no, hang on, this, is, this isn't right. Um, also, I like how the S from the logo in the top left is lining up with x in the background. <laughs> kind of works. Um... It's 16 symbols, 16 symbols. <laughs> Like I said, I, I do like this. I'm just worried it, we're not going to be able to do what we want with it. <laughs> um, okay, okay. I think it's good. There's definitely precedent for it. There's definitely precedent for um, the big, possibly not good people with lots of powers joining the party and it not feeling right. Um, we need to fix so much in post was one more thing. True, I, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um... It's very satisfying, the logo. I mean, I can, I can make it work a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Um, slightly a different colour font, interestingly. Evidently, my branding needs a bit of work. Um, also, because Grigori is covering up the top of the P, it does look like 16 symbols, the hot. Um... <laughs> and the and, and hot is directly underneath Gregory and Bran, which I think that's kind of appropriate. Um, <laughs> of the characters, maybe we realised Bonk's selfishness earlier on in a rewrite. But yeah, maybe we can introduce it now. This can be a thing that we can fiddle around with later. It's a good story beat. I like the idea. And it's like, oh, we're all too... And, and like, Mo's, like, really excited about it. It's like, oh, we'll go on bonk. We're going to fight together and stuff like that. And sort of, it just doesn't work. Um, because obviously the hottest character. That is true. That is true. Um, well, the, the Onion. Onion also has a flame in her head. <laughs> so. Um, doesn't have a lamp for her head. Then it's a lamp. So it's not an exposed flame, I guess. How would Onion and Wick get on? I don't know. <laughs> They're both looking up to the left. As is Gabe. And Jethro. I like drawing people looking up to the left, apparently. Um, okay, so... We have... I guess we have a bit of character interest... But maybe this... I think there's going to be some crossover between these two symbols. We get the character introspection. Grandma Bonk joins. Some fights happen. The character development is continuing to happen as Mo realises that Grandma Bonk maybe isn't quite the philanthropist that she thought she was and she's just sort of like you know, not really. And like they're fighting and then the character is injured and Mo goes to help them and Grandma Bonk's like fuck, I'm attacking the enemy. It's like no, friend's hurt. Gotta help the friend. Um Because maybe Mo's only ever dealt with Grandma Bonk in isolation, just the two of them. And it's like there's been no real reference you know, they're going around and they're helping people, but... You know. Maybe there's a reason Grandma Bonk is always sort of... On her own. 
They're hot headed. Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, don't let Wicked Nun Union interact. Um, that's in the sequel. So. Okay. So I'm assuming like enemies are flying out in the void and attacking shadowy goopy things or something. Um And so a lot of the characters are defending, Bonk joins the party and we sort of see the sort of slightly selfish nature of things. I don't know. Again, this this is definitely something that would is going to benefit in the rewrite, but uh... Sequel, aka 16 symbols, Goons Galore, in which we find out Wicked Onion and our roommates, and the house is constantly on fire, and they like it that way. <laughs> this is fine. Um. I want to draw that now. <laughs> I want to draw a wicked onion sitting at in the on the um No, why can't I see better Twitch TV? Oh, that's annoying. You know the dog with the fire and the, the this is fine. Like that, but with wicked onion. Please do, although no pressure. <laughs> we started this stream talking about how I do not have time to draw all the things I want to draw. Um, as does Kiro and everybody. Um, <laughs> I got like Christmas card designs to have draw and then get printed and then send off. Um, got stuff I want to do as Christmas presents for people. Got stuff to do for the video. Got commissions. Got the the. Uh, friend draws. Aven Vale got all this stuff for games. Too many things. What a hard life I lead. <laughs> that I have too many things to draw. Oh no. Woe is me.
Maybe like this sort of spooky. Spooky void monsters floating around. Sporkums! Um, you've joined four gift exchange things for this winter. You have assignments for three of them and you keep getting ideas for them. You can't stop. <laughs> the only reason I wanted, wanted to draw that. Well, I, I hope. Best of luck. Try not to but do too much for all of them. The idea of the bread's just on the floor, like, ah, oh, goop! Goop on my face! And I was like, I'm gonna go help him! Rumbong's like, no! You must do this, 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 and this, and focus your powers. Stop worrying about everyone else. They can't take care of themselves, etc., etc. Or is that contradictory to what we had before in the hallucination? Maybe. Just a thought. Maybe the hallucination we had before, when we first encountered poison, this. Maybe that wasn't actually poison. Uh, maybe that wasn't actually Grandma Bonk. That was Mo's expectation of what Grandma Bonk would say in a, a situation like that. I and mean, now we're starting to see like the stark difference between Mo's expectations and the reality. I don't know. Um, you did stop one, had two ideas for one of them, but you decided to drop one idea because you didn't think you could do it justice. But one of the gift will be six chapters of drawings. I will reiterate, six chapters of drawings. <laughs> with varying drawings per chapter, and another one is three ideas for one person, again with varying sketches per idea. You have very little control. <laughs> six chapters of drawings! <laughs> I wish you the best of luck, but at the same time, things too much. No, no shame or problem in scaling things down or stopping. Look after yourself. Sorry, I'm in, I'm in a bit of um, I'm in a bit of mum mode because uh, I said before I sort of uh, I said this at the hangout, but my mum's sort of had a little bit of injury and has to look after herself but she's the sort of person who just belts around doing everything constantly and I have to keep going no you need to rest and she says yes mum um so I've got a bit of that on the mind so I'm like Kiro rest <laughs> don't do too much people need everyone rest <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody that the weapons that are being used in this <laughs> while fighting monsters in the void are still unconventional. Um, Brad is always the victim of shenanigans. Uh, listen, that gift needs to be posted on a writing archive site, so yeah, chapters. It's five plus one idea and six ideas. Still. Oh, she's doing okay. She's getting a lot better. Now she's rested. Uh, the amount of convincing we had to do to get her to just stop, <laughs> sit down. Um, we're having these high expectations of Grandma Bonk because that's what Grandma Bonk she grew up with, not being aware that uh, she was special. 
for lack of a better word. She's only ever really sort of interacted with her alone, now seeing her interact with the rest of the world. The sort of the imperfect, as it were. <laughs> um... Just starting to see sort of part of the true, true natures of Grandma Bonk. Again, I do feel a little bit bad that this character was based on um, Ragdoll's grandma, but <laughs> I think we can separate reality from fiction at this point. Uh, how do shoes work? They work like this. <laughs> it looks terrible, but I'm done. Um, true na nature of goddess bonk. Gods are complicated, yes. I want to do the 16 symbols weapon idea for a video. It's like, I've so many, started so many other things. I really shouldn't start anymore. But by the time I actually get round to it, the 16 symbols will be over. Um, Yeah, also sorry, Ragnar. <laughs> yeah, so you can't be here to defend yourself, so we're going to smear mud all over your relatives. No, we're not. It's just trying to come up with an interesting narrative with complicated characters. All the complex characters, not complicated. <laughs> Definitely not complicated characters. <laughs> One of the characters is literally a candle with a knife and has the personality of a candle with a knife. Um... Mums are like that, huh? You're way behind chat because you need to say pooch! Which has become old, they are as much work as puppets, yeah. This is similar with humans, really. Um, Forest of Doom is long over and you don't see you not making art of pal anymore. <laughs> it's our baby, we keep making stuff for it if we want. I feel like there's a there's a kind of rich bed of nonsense that we can make for 16 symbols. This, this is the pro- I feel like I should have leaned more into this. And just done bunches of stuff all around, rather than you know, all the seven billion things I do simultaneously all the time. Um... I had lots of ideas for videos and silly things. You know, doing all the monsters, rendering the bosses properly, um... designing weapons and items and weird things. I mean, a lot of that I guess we can fob on to the idea of... I don't know if we're going to do it. Um, the, uh... sort of designing a game, a bunch of people all getting together and like designing bits in areas of a game as a draw through, as it were. Um, where we each have our own zone and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, we could do stuff like that. But... Yeah, it's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Because that's one of the things that, like, you know, anyone can join in. You don't even need to be an artist. You can just sort of submit bits and bobs. You don't have to do it every week. You can just do whenever you want. Kind of like a prompt list thing, but no rush, no particular, um, you know. It's like past him, Mon, but I don't have to do everything at the end. <laughs> Uh, 
They can stuff with friends! Yes, indeed. Um, oh, I need to draw Carlo, having an existential crisis. There's just too much stuff to do. So hands work, right? <laughs> sort of lightning stuff going on. I don't know what, I don't really know what Grandma Box powers would be, but like I say, you sort of imagined healing, but these, these gods did fight, so... <laughs> Like I say, I like the idea of a bit of, bit of redemption arc at the end of, like, Grandma Bonk realises that this is just going on too long and it's hurting people and, you know, maybe this should just all end and then she sort of sacrifices herself or something along those lines. I don't know. I guess if we don't get a death symbol, it's difficult to implement. Um, but yeah, I did, I did originally... Um, Prats of Weapon, Kitchenware, Mose Weapon, Broom, Bonk's Weapon, LIGHTNING! UNLIMITED POWER! Um... Yeah, so my original idea for for a, a draw-through thing um, that involved a bunch of people all working on stuff um, was... I was gonna do... What is that? I called it, I think, the Colony of Chaos, I think I called it. And I, wa I wanted to do... I tried to come up with a thing that was like... Originally it was gonna be like a monthly prompt thing, like an October... What's it? Um... So sort of every day, everyone can draw stuff for a prompt on a thing. But the idea was, if you remember in the, uh, the Citadel of Chaos, um, i.e. Uh, Beth deserved better. Um, <laughs> there was supposed to be like, there was this, the Citadel was on a mountain and the mountain housed like an, an army of chaotic monsters. Um, and then at the end of the game, you beat the wizard and then you leave. I like the idea that the massive army of chaotic monsters in the mountain just eventually worked out a kind of self-sufficient society and just sort of lived in the mountain. Um, and I was like, let's, everyone can sort of help design that and you can design characters and like what this weird monster the life is like and, you know, how they make food and all that sort of stuff. I thought that might be a nice little sort of communal fantasy, open fantasy project to be working on. Um, and that was going to be my sort of group thing until we came up with this idea of everybody working on zones of a game so maybe that can be a zone who knows <laughs> uh let's draw some more Wibbly wobbly ghoulies. They're all different shapes and sizes. I've made this difficult for myself now. <laughs> kind of a cool effect. Got the kind of goopy thing going on, maybe. Uh, what's the next symbol? Good, good point. Um, 
please, please don't be something stupid. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mystical Mumbo Jumbo. Guaranteed, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is yet, but it makes sense. Uh, let me do the harder pencil so I don't have to press so hard and bugger up my wrist. Yeah, I'm learning. I don't even know what these goopy monsters are, I just kind of like drawing them. More Mumbo Jumbo! This entire place is Mystical Mumbo Jumbo, so yeah, that tracks. I imagine this is like a consequential Mystical Mumbo Jumbo if we want some sort of godly. Oh, I should probably put it up on the thing, shouldn't I? Um. Like, that wouldn't be a terrible time to have the Grandma Bonk sacrifice thing happen, I guess? Uh, that's. Uh, it's an underscore, not a hyphen, is it? Sorry, I broke the thing. There we go. <clears throat> um, nope, too much. Still too much. Hey, there we go. Say hello. Um, what's the next symbol so we know what to work for? Okay. It's getting near the end. There will only be two symbols we don't know after this. <laughs> There's gotta be a boss at some point, right? <laughs> oh dear. Uh well. Okay. Plot important boss. Maybe final boss? Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Um Shrimp God, shrimp God. Good little sad face. Um, shrimp, God. So, okay. So how are we gonna? 
How are we going to pass this? Um... Uh, I should probably, I might as well reveal, stick that at the end so that we know there's only two symbols left. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Because the last symbol, if I remember correctly, is the end cutscene. Uh, apart from something happening to Grandma Bonk, presumably, the mystical mumbo jumbo could also help Shrimp God interacting with us for the first time. True, we do need to actually be introduced to Shrimp God. Um, as a character, although not as a character character, because we haven't got a symbol. Um, then again, I probably didn't introduce as a symbol, like, meeting bosses who are characters, kind of, final bosses. No spoilers, there are some Final Fantasy games where the final boss literally comes out of nowhere. Um, so, and I don't think I, I don't think I stuck that as a, we meet a new character. It's, no, it's a boss. Um... Actually, now that I think about it, saying that they come out of nowhere is more literal than it sounds. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Spoilers. Uh, okay. So, just to clarify, we go to the weird place. Oh, we go. We go to the shrimp shrine, the the prawn cult. Um, we gather, we gather crystals, portal opens, Grandma Bonk's like, yeah, we need you to help! Um, and pulls us through the portal. Maybe we don't even have a choice. Um, it's here that Poison Nurse starts to divulge information about, like, that she assumed we knew about being... Or she assumes that Mo knew about being, uh, sort of an inheritor of certain abilities from, um, Hippo God... Has Mo ever learned that Hippo God and uh, Grandma Bonk are the same person? Is that something we can learn now? <laughs> now that I think about it, I don't think that's ever been explained to Mo. <laughs> Not sure. We did have we did kind of have the scene in with the the injured um, Hippo acolyte uh, that Viv took us to. And I can't remember what we revealed there. <laughs> Information was revealed. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's where we learned that. But I don't think Mo realised, I don't think Mo learned that that's why she was special. Poison Nurse kind of told her, but not really, because she assumed we knew. Yeah. Poison Nurse assumed we knew. Peridot assumed that she remembered things wrong. <laughs> all in all, it's just a miscommunication nightmare. Um... Yeah, so, anyway, whatever is revealed is revealed. Uh, everyone assumes a lot of things. I kind of like that. Because a, a lot of the time in stories, you, you sort of end up with a situation where if you actually sit down and analyzing it, analyze it, a character couldn't have known something. It's just that the group of characters that they're in has people who do know it, and so it's just assumed that information is passed around although that character's never actually learned anything. This story is the opposite. This story is everybody thinks everyone else knows stuff and they don't. <laughs> um, Mo joins Brad and Brown into just wanting to go home, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that, that happens. Um, then... Assailed by void ghosts, or whatever these things are. Um, the ghosts of every enemy we've killed in the game. And boy, do you need to grind in this game. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we get assailed by the ghosts, and Grandma Bonk uh, sort of drags us into sort of helping. Uh, it joins the party, in inverted commas. Uh, it's probably more accurate to say, drags us into her business. And while we make a relatively well-oiled machine, particularly given that five of our characters have only just joined... Grandma Bong just sort of ruins it by dragging us into circumstances, dragging characters into circumstances where they can't work together, which is kind of the whole point of, you know, a lot of the story is working together to solve problems. And as a consequence, people get injured and Mo can't help and it's all... It's not going as well as people would have hoped. Uh, particularly Grandma Bonk, who is quite annoyed by this. We just, we just learned how to do combo attacks, and then Grandma Bonk joined. <laughs> exactly. 
I don't think we've had a fight with like Wick or Gabe yet. Um, maybe we have. I've, I've probably had like incidental fights in Magma City or on our way to the cave or all these sorts of things. You know, there's a lot of gameplay that we're missing out here because it's not story. But uh, plenty of stuff you can do. I feel like Gabe and Wick would be a good a good combo. But uh, <laughs> the little and large. So yeah, that happens. So we've got that, and this gets Mo questioning things more. It's like, is this really? Because, because again, like Mo has been largely exposed to Grandma Bonk in isolation, uh, and long before she had any idea that Grandma Bonk was apparently a god. Wick will create a battle for him to fight in as soon as he joins the party. <laughs> Wick is just a walking bat. As soon as Wick is in your party, the encounter rate goes up by like 20, 20 times. <laughs> every step, every single step you take, every move you make, enemies will be watching you. Um, Wick will be fighting something. Every breath you take, that's the one. I forgot about it. Uh, so yeah, um, we have to fight, it doesn't go well. Then Mystical Mumbo Jumbo, then boss. That's what we've got to work out next. What is the mystical member Jumbo? What is the boss? The boss is probably Shrimp God in some form or another. Uh, if we're lucky, we might get multiple phases. I don't know what the next symbols are. Probably next stream we'll just reveal the next two symbols and see what see what happens. You know, um, next stream might even be the last. Probably. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to brush over the final cutscene a little bit, but we can sort that out in the sort it out in post. So mystical member Jumbo happens. And boss plot. I still like the idea of Grandma Bonk. Maybe not even like philanthropically. We're so close. Exactly, yeah. Fix it in post. Fix everything in post. <laughs> this is the big difference between this and Final Fantasy VIII. So we're going to fix things in post. So, yeah, I think it's one more stream. 30 streams in. <laughs> Technically 31 because we had the character creation one. They get 32, that's a nice number. I like 32. And then however many rewrites <laughs> that are gonna happen. So yeah, uh, I like the idea that... Uh, oh, Paige can, Paige can no way to go going to bed. Oh. Bless. Um... I keep starting a sentence and then getting distracted. I need to focus. So, I like the idea that Grandma Bonk sacrifices herself to diminish the power of Shrimp God so that we can actually reasonably fight a god. Um, originally, my idea was like the phil philanthropy of like, ah, oh, this has gone on too long. I do the land is now for the people, not for the gods, etc. The last time it was a, an act of sort of selfishness, she thought she could win, the Shrimp God thought Shrimp God could win, etc, etc. Um, but maybe this time it's just sort of exhaustion? <laughs> maybe it's just like, this can't go on. <laughs> so it's sort of less philanthropic and more just sort of resigned. I don't know if that would be satisfying, but I quite like the idea of it. Um, and it's just kind of like an underwhelming thing, and Moe's just like, huh. <laughs> He attack, he attack, he came back to distract. That sounded a bit like a sort of Run DMC rhyme. <laughs> a bit sort of 90s hip hop underneath it. Or well, 80s, I guess. I'm an old woman, you dumb old crustacean, this has been going on for too long! Um, and that sort of sets us up. Like, yeah, I, I think that will require a lot of finessing in order to make it make sense in any reasonable respect. <laughs> So, but I like I like that idea as the mystical mumbo jumbo. We have the sort of you know maybe Grandma Bonk transforms into the hippo, and then there's this big CG fight that goes on for way too long and is unskippable. And then that leads us into the fight, and you know Mo has mixed feelings about the situation. <laughs> Poison nurse is like yes, best of both worlds. Um.
nine hours of cutscenes before the final battle. And the final battle starts with a move that if you haven't set up your characters just the right way, will instantly kill you. And you have to go back to before we got in the portal. Um... <laughs> Are you hell bent on ruining Grandma? But I don't know. I like the I I I quite like stories of like stories that like big up this character as ah oh, this epic ah oh, this amazing character of God so on and so forth and then you meet them and they're just kind of selfish ass <laughs> and they're just look kind of underwhelming and it's like oh but it turns out the power the power is it within you all along you were the most important thing not the stories. It's disappointments and realizations are for the real world. Yeah, but it's now it's down to the new people, new generation, to take over from the crusty old generation, and you know actually change the world for the better rather than trying to keep it as it is. Metaphor. <laughs> um, I just made that up on the spot, but it sounds good. <laughs> um. Yeah, you just like imperfect gods. I, I, yeah. I'm up for that. I don't know. Yeah, we have a thing. Like I said, I think the problem is, is that all the way through the story, we've kind of neglected Grandma Bonk. Grandma Bonk started as this lovely old woman who don't take no crap. And then some way into the story became a god. And now we've met her properly and she turns out to be not great. And it's like... That could be smoothed over, rather. I, th I think there's more that we could do to make it so that that's less of a sl slap in the face. Again, this is the problem with writing straight ahead, you know? <laughs> you always want to go back and change things and develop it. And that's why we have the rewrites. That's why we're fixing it in post, you know? To take from this, the old generation uh, is always going to be worse because we 2021. <laughs> Uh, it's like, you know, you, le you learn things uh, uh, from previous generations and from successive generations, and but ultimately things need to move on. Um, we'll fix it in post. At least two streams worth of rewrites. I'd, yeah, definitely at least two. <laughs> it depends how granular level you want to get, really. <laughs> like I say, I'm going to move, I'll move those streams to Saturdays so that Ragdoll can join in. Um, and anyone else, if you want to have interesting ideas for rewrites, feel free. We'll get on voice chat, we'll do some doodles. Um, we'll go back and we'll try and work it out. I'll, prob I'll probably actually before then I'll try and sit down and write out the entire plot, stick it up on the website, so that we know what we're rewriting. Um, <laughs> keep looking at Brad. <laughs> um, yeah, let me draw much <laughs> today. Spent spent a lot of it fixing stuff, fixing that. I need to fix this. It happened before. I can't remember how it happened. I think I must have accidentally still had it selected when I lassoed something on another layer. But it's never had a good time in this story. <laughs> Maybe in the ending he has a wonderful time. He just gets his he gets a bakery and he helps feed people in in the ruins of the city. He can set up a bakery so that people can eat while they rebuild. He's really happy. Your creator Grandma Bonk is awesome, AU. <laughs> like I said, I, like I said, I think I like the idea of the, the the awesome character, but at the same time, it doesn't make for an interesting story. I don't think. Just having a character who's really, really good against a character who's really, really bad. Did slap in the face of Brad make uh, Brad hit himself with his rolling pin? That that was my thought. Is that Moe's gonna rush over to stop Brad hitting himself in the face? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that's that. That's I guess the penultimate stream. Maybe we're gonna have to. Yeah, this is a bit. We're trying to cram so much into this final scene, and well, it's a final area. It doesn't have to be a scene. This, this is the thing. I think we can sort of break up little scenes and have it build as we go along, and it's just we don't really have time to sit down and work that all out. Uh, during the credits cutscene, you see him baking bread and Stoker eating a muffin while Gregory is trying to steal a cupcake. And Brad, like, hits him over the head and is like, you can't ask for one. <laughs> and he's happy. Yay. And loaf table. Loaf table? Uh... 
Um, but yeah, thanks for coming along, everyone. Thanks to you for a little bit of a jumbled mess of a stream, but I think it was all right. Um, <clears throat> I think I have a good tactic for Tuesdays now of getting energy for the stream, which is have a Diet Coke just before I start. <laughs> um, Loaf is sunbathing on the counter. Oh. Maybe in that cutscene, Loaf is a bit more grown up. Who knows? Um. <laughs> Linen room. Linen room! We should play Hitman again. Um, or different Hitman. Big Loaf! Talks about Loaf carrying food around on their back to cast. Oh, did we? Ah, oh, I'm glad we did. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be back tomorrow with more inscription. Um, going to try and keep my teeth. <laughs> I named I named the vod, um, for that. I was trying to come up with a good name for. For that story, I, was like, I want to do something with the fact that I accidentally pulled out the tooth. Um, and I was like, "Hang on, accidental." That works too well. <laughs> this is literally in the word. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Yeast gods. Yeast gods. So many shouty facts. Uh, we need more shouty facts. I need to come up with another shouty meme. Um, keep it here. I, I endeavour to not use any more teeth. However, there is no system in the game where you can get rid of an item, which is annoying. Um, you love the shout effects. Need to shout more. Um, this was the thing I remembered the other day. When I first started streaming and doing game stream, I always used to come away from the stream thinking, what was the thing of that stream that was really good? Like, what, what was the, what's the memorable thing in that one stream? And it's, it's like three years later now, and I'm like... How many streams have I done? Nothing, nothing's memorable. It's all it's all a blur. <laughs> but I do feel like I should get into that mindset again as trying to in a stream trying to think of something that's like yeah, that's the that's the thing. That was that was that's what made that stream good. What made this stream good? I don't know. We turned a lovable character into an arsehole. <laughs> no we didn't. No we didn't. She's just she's not human. She has a different perspective on the world, and that, and that causes friction and damage and hurt for the people around, and she doesn't quite understand. Um. Oh, we talked about the Brown and Brad friendship. We did, yes. The the team jaded. <laughs> team done with this. So that's nice. I feel like there is a good pairing system in all of the characters in this. It should work, because there are 12 of them, it sort of works out. Poison Nurse and Mo, uh, Grigori and Stoker, Brad and Bran. I guess Gil and Gabe. <laughs> the sort of slightly more stoic, bulky characters. Uh, Wick and Onion, Team Chaos. Yeah, Gillen Gabe. Peridot and Bramble. The characters who probably should have more to do in the story, but don't. <laughs> the people who just want to do right by their people. The character, yeah, the characters who want to do right by their people. Jethro and Wick. No! <laughs> the flammable and the inflamed. No. <laughs> yeah, Bramble wasn't. Bramble probably should have been developed a bit more. I think they didn't really have much to do. They were just sort of there because we needed a character. <laughs> yeah. Also, can Kajiro come in at the, at the end somewhere? <laughs> I want the final fight to be like just all the characters we met through the story just entering the void and Kijiro just comes in and throws 7,000 knives. <laughs> like, well, if I couldn't sell them, <laughs> just chucks them all. 
One thousand needles, but it's knives. Add that to the notes of things to fix in post. <laughs> this entire character. <laughs> Um, you love lizards. It's a fun design. I, I'm a big, big fan of the design that Chibi did. Um, I like the lizard. Lizard's fun. I like this idea of a character who's just trying to do good by their people who have been displaced by a disaster. Um, but they just never had anything to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't have, like, the ongoing idea of, you know, onion stealing things and Jethro just being a sort of athletic nuisance. Um, it's everyone comes to fight. The more you reject the hero's knives, the more they have to throw in the end. It all it all balances out. If you do a no leveling run, it's just Kijiro instantly kills the boss. <laughs> it's like you made it this far, you deserve a break. <laughs> okay, I need to stop now because my throat is inexplicably not not kind. Um, I'll be back with Inscription tomorrow. Inscription seems fun. I'm intrigued to know how everything's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Um, yeah, and then on Saturday, I don't think... I think we're doing RPG stuff on Saturday, so there probably won't be a stream, so I'll do a slightly longer stream on Saturday to make up for it. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday to make up for it. Um, so probably no stream on Saturday. Uh, then back on Sunday with some more bone, bone games. Spooky bone games. Um... Hang on a minute. This Saturday, this is one of the... Ah, that means Inscription is going to go into November. And I want to play Resident Evil, so that's going to be a spooky month. Ah, there's too many spooky games. Not enough time. <laughs> People hack the game just by talking to Kajiro over and over and over, and they do way too much damage in the end. <laughs> Good old Kajiro. Um... Every every overlooked character is gonna come back and help in the end. We're gonna have like the 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 bridge trolls. They're gonna come back. We're gonna have the our um, carpet friend, whose name I can't remember. Spooky times don't have to end with October. That is true. That is true indeed. Schrodinger, of course. Will he be there? Won't he? Who knows? We'll find out. We'll have to observe. Um, Freya, that was the name. Freya. Should have remembered, that's a character in FF9. Um, spooky times till Santa comes. And then it's spooky Santa. Insert the gif of death from Discworld dressed up as Santa. Um, yeah. Yes, I said I was going to stop. Thanks for coming along. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope, hope, you know, the ending of this is fun and satisfying and good. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out. Um, yeah. Have a, have a wonderful time, everyone. Uh, look after yourselves. I'll be back tomorrow with inscription. Um, yeah. Maybe, ooh. Maybe because Chibi isn't here, maybe we can stream on Thursday <laughs> instead of Saturday. We'll see. We'll see. Have a grand old week, everyone. Look after yourselves. Goodbye!